Hi guys, so today we're going to be discussing about the financial statements of a service business. Okay, so let me remind you that there are four basic financial statements prepared during the end of the year. So these would include your statement of financial position, your statement of changes in owner's equity, your income statement, and then your statement of cash flows. In addition to these, we have the notes, which provide supplementary information to those provided on your financial statements. Again, notes are not financial statements, but rather they are only supporting information. And now we're going to take a look at the statement of financial position. We're going to analyze the different parts. So first we have the heading, which is composed of three lines. Don't forget to put this on your paper, especially during quizzes, because a lot would usually forget and you'd get deductions. So anyway, the first line would be the company name, and then the, and then the second line would be the type of report issued, which in this case is the statement of financial position, and then the third line would show the date, as of December 31, 20XX. So usually the date would be December 31, but Remember, this is not always the case. If a company follows a fiscal year, the date would not fall on December 31. It is also important to note that for the statement of financial position, we use the term as of to indicate a point in time. So it's like telling users that as of this day, the company has how many assets, liabilities, or equity. And then you label now the assets as your heading. And then under it, you have your current assets. Remember that current assets are always arranged according to liquidity. So simply put, you organize them according to how easy it would be to turn them into cash. So the, the format would always be this. It's always cash, followed by your investment in trading securities, followed by your trade and other receivables, followed by your prepaid expenses. And after that, you now list your non-current assets, which in the case of basic accounting students would only have property, plant, and equipment. And then you get your total assets. And now we move on to your liabilities and owner's equity. So first you list down your current liabilities, which is usually your trade and other payables. Remember, current liabilities are arranged according to due date. And then followed by your non-current liabilities, which may include your mortgage payable and your bonds payable. And then you add your owner's equity, K capital, and then you get your total liabilities and owner's equity. So now notice that there are numbers beside the account titles. Now these numbers are actually referencing to the notes to financial statements, which provide details regarding the components of each account. It also provides details regarding how the balances on the financial position are actually computed. So later I'm going to show you which components form which accounts. So for example, you have here trade and other receivables. So you may have your accounts receivable and your notes receivable fall under that cat category. So. And anyway, let's move forward to the income statement. Again, just like the financial position, we have to put the heading, which is again composed of your company name, the type of statement issued, in this case income statement, and then the date for the period ended December 31, 2014. And now notice that now we use for the period ended December 31, 2014 compared to the statement of financial position which used as of. This is because when preparing the income statement you're trying to you're trying to trace the changes and the transactions which occurred for a whole period meaning from day 1 to the day of the financial statement so there and anyway this is the natural form which as i said before is used for the service business basically you group all the revenues together and then you group all the expenses together and then deduct to get the net income. 
Remember that expenses are always arranged according to magnitude. So this means that the biggest amounts are always listed first before the smaller amounts. But do take note that miscellaneous expense, regardless of the amount, is always presented last. So now that you have your income statement, we move on to your statement of changes in equity. Again, don't forget the heading, which is composed of your company name, the type of statement issued, which in this case is statement of changes in equity, and then the date for the period ended December 31, 2014. Just like the income statement, we use for the period ended for the statement of changes in equity since we're trying to trace the changes that occurred in the capital account for the whole period. So you see here, you start with the beginning capital during the year, and then you add your net income, which you get from your income statement for the year. And then you include your additional investments to get the subtotal and deduct the drawing or withdrawals for the period, and you, then you get capital end. So this capital then goes to your statement of financial position. So that's how they're interrelated. So when asked to prepare the financial statements, you're probably going to be given a very long list of all the accounts that need to be um, included. So to be able to prepare these statements correctly, you first need to, of course, know all the formats that I have presented earlier, but it's also important to classify the accounts correctly. So you have to know what accounts fall under assets, liabilities, and so on. Now I know it's hard for basic accounting students to distinguish the different account titles, so I've been there and now I'm going to share it to you, my notes, so that it would be a lot easier for you guys. So. All you need to do is just memorize these accounts. So under assets, we have your current assets. Remember again that current assets are always arranged according to liquidity. So there's a specified order in which they have to be presented in the statement of financial position. So you start with your cash and then your investment in trading securities followed by your trade and other receivables and then your prepaid expenses. Now under your cash, you may have cash on hand or cash in bank. So these two components would not be presented on the financial state on the financial statement, but rather these would be presented to on your notes. So remember the numbers that I have shown you earlier. Let me remind you right here. Now when you look at the notes, you would see these components you should be able to see them, so that's how you do it. And now we have here trade and other receivables, and again I have listed down all the components, which include your accounts receivable, less the allowance for bad debts or doubtful accounts, add your notes receivable, your interest receivable, or basically anything receivable, you know, and then you add your advances to employees, and then accrued income. Okay, remember that advances to employees fall under trade and other receivables and not under prepaid expenses as most people would perceive. So what are accrued income? So basically these are income that you have already earned but not get received payment for. So for example, you've already delivered your goods to someone but they haven't paid you so you have a receivable from them and that's basically your accrued income. And then now we have your prepaid expenses, which may compose of your office supplies, store supplies, prepaid rent, and your prepaid insurance. So if you see anything prepaid, like prepaid advertising, it would probably fall under prepaid expenses. And now we move on to your non-current assets. So for basic accounting, we only have your property, plant, and equipment, but under it, you can have your land, building less accumulated depreciation, equipment, less accumulated depreciation, and furnitures and fixtures, less accumulated depreciation for the corresponding accounts. Remember to match them appropriately. 
and notice that land does not have any accumulated depreciation because land does not decrease in value, so there is no depreciation. And now we move on to your liabilities. So again, you have your current and non-current liabilities and the current liabilities are arranged according to due date. So this means whichever is due earliest would come first. So basically you have your trade and other payables. And the components listed here would then be presented on the notes. Only the line trade and other payables would be presented on the statement of financial position. Okay, so you have your accounts payable, your accrued expenses, which are expenses you have incurred but not yet paid. So to make it easier to understand, think of your Meralco bill. So at the end of the month, you'd receive a bill and that bill is for the total electricity that you have used up for the whole month. So in that case, you haven't paid for it, but you've already used it up. And that is the concept of accrued expenses. And so you also have your notes payable, that's the discount on notes payable. And then you have your liability on discounted notes receivable, and then your unearned income, which are basically income you have not earned but received payment for. So if your customer gives you an advance payment for rental, that would be your unearned income. And then we have your non-current liabilities, which may include your mortgage payable and your bonds payable. And now let's move on to your revenues. Okay, that's a lot simpler. So you, you of course have your service income since you're in the service industry. And then you have other income which may compose of your interest income, your dividends income, your rent income, and then again on sale of PPE. And then we now move on to the expenses. Again, as I have said, if you're using the natural form of income statement, the expenses have to be arranged according to magnitude. The largest come first, followed by the next, and you list down until the smallest. But remember that miscellaneous expenses, regardless of the amount, is always presented at the last. Actually, it's three of these are presented at the bottom in the format, in the order. So that's miscellaneous, other expenses, and then your finance costs. So for expenses, you could have your employee benefit costs, which include your sales salaries, office salaries, salaries and ex employee benefits. And then you also have your sales commissions, and then you have advertising expenses, your supplies expense, which compose of, uh, which is composed of the store supplies and your office supplies. And then you have your depreciation expense, for building, furniture and fixtures and equipment. Again, remember that these um, sub accounts are presented in your on your notes and not on the financial statements. Only the line items here are presented on the income statement. Okay, so moving on, you also have taxes and licenses expense. You have budget expense, miscellaneous expenses, other expenses which may include loss and sale of property, plant, and equipment. And then you have your finance costs, which include interest expense. And then you have utilities expense, insurance expense, transportation expense, gas and oil, repairs and maintenance, rent expense, and charitable contributions expenses. Um, so that's all, and I hope the list helps you guys.